Oh, and that's a, an excellent point, Councillor Bjorkman. I want to add um, the program will be retroactive uh, to last September 2015, uh, 2014. As long as um, you know, you've got the valid receipts and we get in there and inspect to make sure everything was done and, and performed in accordance with uh, um, acceptable standards, then, then that's something that we would, we would recommend that Council make it retro. Thank you, Mr. Nepsey. Councillor Texero. I'm sure we could all talk about this for a while, but uh, I, I'm prepared to, uh, to move the recommendations as, as they're laid out. I, I think it's a great program. I hope uh, people will take advantage of it, um, and um, I wish we could do more quicker at this point, but this is the best we can do for now, and, and we're going to move forward with Stantec's recommendations also, so hopefully we can uh, start to solve some of the issues. Okay, so we have a motion by Councillor Kexero, supported by Councillor Snyder. Uh, and any questions? Councillor Vokes? Not so much question. Obviously, uh, I, I want to move forward with it too, uh, w without any delay. But one of the things we sh should do first, coming out of this subsidy program, and we will obviously turn to the committee to that, along with Chris, is when we had the opportunity. I, I see Dave Cassidy up there, and, and myself, and, and again Steve Bjorkman and Dave Cassidy met with a resident over on Stanley. And after we had the discussions with that resident, we took the opportunity to do a little walk up, just up Stanley alone. And when we were on Stanley Street, well over 50% of the people were connected into our sewage system on downspouts, one street alone. So if we do anything out of the subsidy program, the first thing we need to do is exercise the 100% reimbursement on downspout uh, uh, retrofitting, if you will. So I, I just want to make that a, a point of interest. Thank you, Councillor Vokes. Councillor Bjorkman. Thank you, through Deputy Mayor. And I just wanted to take a, a moment and thank the, uh, the committee. Um, we had talked, we wanted to make sure that we bring forward what the committee's doing, two meetings, um, report on, on the time that they're spending. There's a, a lot of people that spend a lot of time, a lot of effort of their own to help everybody else uh, that's going through this. So I just want a special note to thank that committee for the work they've done. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Bjorkman. Uh, Mr. Nepsey. Uh, through your worship, further to Councillor Vokes' comment on the on the uh, the disconnection of, of uh, non-essential downspouts, that's part of the requirement of the plumbing program. Uh, if you're coming out looking for money for the check valve, uh, or for a sump pump, or for any of the works, uh, you must have the non-essential downspouts disconnected. So that's part of a requirement. If you don't, then either you have to do it by taking advantage of the program, or or on your own. So. It's kind of a win-win that way. Thank you. Any further questions or comments to the motion? I'll call the question then. All in favor? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. So if you have an agenda, we're on to 7F in the agenda package. It's planning report number 2015-25. It's in regard to the interim control bylaw for Essex Center Ward 1. And we'll start the discussion off with a comment from uh, Mr. Phillips, our CAO. Thank you. Through you, uh, Deputy Mayor. The report that you have in your package uh, to Council, uh, you had an opportunity to read through it. You'll recognize that the report recommends the retention of Stantuck to continue studying our policies and our development standards related to new development. Your administration is not recommending an interim control bylaw this evening. Although we understand that you have asked for that, uh, we feel that this is a, a very substantive and aggressive move and one that is somewhat draconian in nature. It's a legally valid option, uh, but I, I want to give you a little bit of a preamble on it and then we can address Jeff's report. Um, it is by an interim control bylaw if you choose to move in that direction, and I have a draft available for you this evening, and the clerk can, can call that up. But I do want to, it's, it's administration's uh, role to provide you the advice on this. It has legislative options that require council's authorizations that you, that you authorize Stantec to do a study first. It's necessary that Council authorize by the study by resolution before committing to any ICB to an, an interim control bylaw. That is a Planning Act requirement. 
The Planning Act provides this as a means at the interim control bylaw for the purposes of the gallery. The Planning Act provides that an interim control bylaw restricts land use pending the adoption of new policies and standards to address the problems directly associated with that land use. So effectively what Council needs to do is adopt first to identify the problems, and we know what the problems are, but we have to identify new policies associated with that. What Council has done thus far tonight, as I've heard, is that they've agreed to study, or excuse me, they've agreed to enact certain uh, sewer works, move forward on an application, and adopt a subsidy bylaw. They have not yet said that they're going to further study the storm water or the, the storm, uh, waste, uh, storm and wastewater uh, management aspect. As um, the Planning Act allows an ICB uh, interim control bylaw, sorry, as a means of permitting time for the establishment of new policies to address land use problems. And in this case, we believe that it's quite broad and not land use specific. Our building department has ascertained that in this year, um, we've seen in Essex Centre, we've approved 12 building permits. I'll, I'll allude to Mr. Mills on that, but we've issued 12 building permits for new single family residential in the community. There are as many as eight applications sitting in an, in hold right now for uh, one for a, a, a three unit uh, multifamily and another four unit multifamily and one single and so that those eight units I, another item that we've discussed of late in terms of the, the development um, is that we want to ensure that if Stantec is authorized to move forward with a further study of the and that's what this report speaks to that you're going to address under item 7 F is that the report really speaks to further study not the imposition of a, of a total freeze on all development. Our concerns are that there are builders that are building in certain neighborhoods where there's not prone to flooding. And I, and I appreciate the, the gallery, many of the people that were in the gallery two weeks ago, and I'm sure many of the people that are in the gallery tonight are those that have experienced the horrific issues of flooding, of basement flooding. And this is not to say that we support moving forward without giving cause to your, your concerns or your issues. But to the broader community, if we put a hold on all development across the community, we stand to face legal action. And maybe more severe than, than a, a class action suit by those that may have flooded, if that in fact is, one, is something that is coming. It's our feeling that another seven or eight homes added in the next year or so uh, is not such a bad thing in terms of the, the low amount of development depending on where they're put, of course. We have the ability, through holding on a number of developments, and I see Mr. Valente in the audience or in the gallery tonight. Mr. Valente has a couple of properties, as, as do other developers in the area, that, that have an H designation on their properties, which is a holding designation. The municipality has the authority not to advance any further development than that that is already established by subdivision plan. The only one that is of concern to us would be the Jacana, uh, I'm sorry, the, not the Jacana, but the, uh, the Townsview, the Gallo subdivision. And that is a, con a particular concern for us and one that we would recommend to, it, to Council before you take steps uh, moving forward with, an, uh, with a request for an ICB is to understand that there's perhaps discussions that we could have or you could enforce those upon the developer and administration to continue those discussions. And I believe Mr. Valente would be willing to look at that as, as a way of moving forward, that at least the retention lake be looked at. There was discussions previously about expanding that before any further development was to take place there. And I think that may appease, or it was brought back to the satisfaction of the community, that may appease those that live in that area before any further development was done there. Other than that, there's only a handful of spots where we've actually seen new development happening, and that's uh, some in the Woodview uh, estates and earlier today council received a, a letter from Ruth Ann Hickey who I see in the gallery that uh, expresses their concern with any broad uh, stoppage of, of, of all development in the community. Council needs to consider what it means as far as the freeze is concerned. We, we are very concerned by 
uh, that it's not to say that you can't do it, but your administration recommends that you take into account that the study uh, looks at more demanding standards for new residential development, one that is uh, particularly when we've discussed climate change impact. I think we're understanding that the more frequent and more severe storms that we are experiencing here are here to stay. Uh, I think that we've seen that evidence from the consultants that would suggest that's something that we need to, to look at. It's difficult to predict the future, though. And we're, we're considering that uh, that's part of that study, if we engage Stantec to look at that further, that we need to increase the one in two year parameter that we're currently using in new development to be something much more generous, one in five, one in whatever that, that number would be. Part of our other part of our conversation, I wanted to apprise council of that tonight, is that in the meeting that we had on Friday with the MPP, uh, with Taras Nadashak, was that we want to lobby the province as well through planning act, is that they need to look at this, not just in Essex, but across Ontario, is that the uh, planning standards right now do not reflect adequately the type of rainfall events that we are experiencing as communities. And this is not a, an Essex uh, alone situation, although I know you're here tonight to talk about your issues and your, your particular uh, concerns. But it is something that we feel that we need to lobby the provincial government on as well. So it, there is, an, uh, there is uh, as I say, an interim control bylaw prepared for your consideration tonight. Uh, however, it's my job to advise you that it, that's a very uh, aggressive and substantive measure if you, do if you do choose to adopt it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Comments or questions from uh, the floor, from councillors? Councillor Bjorkman. Thank you. Is there a, is there a, a minimum time limit? Like I've read that the uh, interim control bylaw can be for a year and then we can move that on for an additional year uh, at that time. Is there a minimum time that's less than a year that we can set that for? Mr. Phillips? My understanding, uh, it, unfortunately Jeff's not with us this evening. He's off in Nova Scotia helping his son move. But uh, from discussions with him, it, the minimum is one year. However, if the studies are satisfied and that you're convinced as a council that you want to remove that, you do have the authority to remove it uh, within that period of time. So you can come back and revisit it, but once it's in place, it's in place for, for the one-year period. Further? Yeah, just to follow up. Um, after talking with many people and, uh, and going out uh, uh, seeing what's happening with our residents, um, we have a reason for an interim control bylaw. Uh, it's stormwater management. Uh, in Stantex report, uh, there's stormwater management 4.3. Um, they state that, the, that stormwater management is the shared responsibility between the town, developers, property owners, the conservation uh, department, and higher levels of government. Uh, we're all looking to have a, a safe, reliable place to live. Um, developers are, are building to code. The systems are designed to today's standards. Um, the property owners, they're putting in their sump pumps, they're putting in their check valves, they're, they're making sure that their, their properties are graded properly. Uh, a statement there is due to the changing weather patterns and growth and the technologies such as uh, lasering fields to make sure that the runoff on the farms outside of our area are going off those properties as fast as they can. We're all competing for the same stormwater uh, removal. Um, if, the, if the reason for us to have this uh, um, interim control bylaw is to make sure that one subdivision is taking care of their area here and one subdivision is taking care of their area in this, but if all of them aren't working together and if we don't have an all-around plan, which is what an interim control bylaw allows us to do, then everybody's building the code and everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, but we're still having this issue. So we have to find a way that we can take a break. And if you're saying that we can work with developers, we've got developers that will say, you know what, we're going to put a hold. We've got hold on four, but we have two active subdivisions. If we can get those to hold so that we can create this, because we are now going to have to engineer above what the provincial government says we're supposed to. It, that's where we are today. Um, 
If I can, just a, a question to uh, Stantec gentlemen. Yes, uh, looking at, at when we flood, our normal um, in our sewers is 2,600, and I don't know, meters cube something. I don't know what that measurement is, but there's 2,600 of them. When we flooded, we had 15,000 running through there. Uh, the measures that you're talking about us taking as far as those, the, the, the new uh, drains and the pumps, is, is that adequate to move 15,000 units? Um, that's a, we have we did a modeling study. That's uh, seventeen thousand. That's the maximum existing sanitary sewer can carry. So that means this, if if that is uh, limited by sanitary sewer, that uh, seventeen thousand. Uh, if you remove more, that that have to still need to look at the stormwater <coughs> itself too. Right. I don't know if that answer your question. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we, we need to move the storm water at the same time. Yeah, yeah, may I add to that? Uh, basically, uh, you are keeping the water flowing. You're not allowing it to back up. Is is uh, that's seventeen thousand five hundred cubic meters per day. So, so as a result, it's not backing up. It's not uh, potentially flooding basements. Thank you very much. Uh, so anyways, to my point though is uh, I came here in favor of an of a interim control bylaw. Uh, if we get to, to the point where we are working with the developers and they're saying, you know what, we're not going to put something else in here until we've looked at our retention ponds, until we've looked at the entire scope of what's in the town, well, that's, that's an action that we can take. But we have to do that before we allow one more thing uh, to be built as far as I'm concerned. Mr. Nepsey, you had a comment, I think, to this, to his, uh, no? Okay, thank you. Okay, it's Councillor Caxero first, eh? next. Through you, Deputy Mayor Malash, um, question to Stantec. What kind of a time frame are we looking at uh, to receive back uh, um, your opinion on, on our policies and standards going forward if we move forward with this uh, recommendation? to get you guys to do a report. Uh, we have to establish the stormwater sewer model. That's a plan that look at the overall entire stormwater s uh, sewer system. So we, we we know this is a very uh, important issue, priority issue for town of Essex. So we will work hard. I think we will can do it in the range of eight months. Councilor Caxero with a follow-up. And, and that was kind of what, what I was looking at. I mean, the issue that I see here is um, the time frame during the period that we're waiting for the report. Because that will tell us how to move forward with respect to policy and whatnot. But in the interim, there is nothing there. So without the interim control bylaw, I mean, yeah, we can look to, to have agreements made with the, the individual developers but there's nothing that really stops. If they don't want to stop, unless there's a holding on it, or if they don't want to be cooperative, we, we may have an issue. I, I would hope that they would be, um, but it's going to hit us in the face every time there's a storm between now and the time we make the improvements to the, to the sanitary sewer system uh, and people flood again. It, it, it'll be pointed out, well, you let a house go up here and you let a house go up there, and that's adding to the problem. Uh, just, just my opinion. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Nepsey's got a comment uh, with regard to that. Through your worship, uh, I think within what we're asking Santec to do, there's a couple things, right? Uh, I think as far as the review of the policies, that's something that can be turned around um, a little quicker as far as moving forward and the standards that we need to push any new development coming in. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? 
The eight months is for the look at the overall system. As Councillor Bjorkman noted, you know, we can, we can ask these people to build to one in a hundred year storm, you know, and have these reservoirs on, on their own site, taking care of their own water, but the entire town problem is not being looked at. That, that will happen in the eight months. But a very short turnaround, I would imagine, within, uh, I mean, I'm maybe holding to the fire here, but within months, I would say, several months, as far as updating our policies and improving them so that moving forward, um, you know, at least new development is, is done to a much higher standard. But. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we've we got we to put a little thought on this because we live in Ontario. And the reason I say that is because the reality is, is nobody floods in the winter. So if we put a moratorium on, I want to, I, I want to put a moratorium on, by the way, to be quite frank, with Ruth Ann and to Ben and to Remo, because of the challenges you see we're up against. They're, they're huge. But with that being said, I don't know how many people flood in November, December, January, February, March in this area. April becomes a concern again, right? So my question is uh, to the developers, if I could, if I, through the chair, if I could turn to them, and they may not readily have the answer at hand, what would you be introducing in terms of new build taxing in our current system? Because the reason I say that is because we're buying time as a result of Mr. Winter sitting at our doorstep. And, and if what they introduce into the system is not that demanding, I want to point out to everybody here that is, is obviously here in interest, and I talked to Russ Phillips the other day, our CAO, about it, and to Chris Napsey, why we were meeting with Tres. If you look at what I call our UAW homes, we have tore down seven, eight, nine homes out of that area. Pardon? Ten. Ten homes. So if we were to move forward with development, that meant 10 homes, and we tore down 10 homes, we're status quo. We haven't labored the system any. And then we're looking at winter. And then hopefully by the time we get through winter, we're well on our way to advancing in, in getting the system set up. But I don't want I, I to do it if it means laboring the system. So would the developers have any idea what they would be introducing into our system over the next month and a half? If I could, Ben, if I could through the chair, it's important to know that. Yes. I, ben, I just want to talk to how many homes, buddy. How many are you looking at introducing into the system. I'm sorry? Seven or hours. And, and in terms of the houses I talked about, they may, they may have been abandoned, but the sewage still run into the, 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 still, the, the pump still worked, and the sewage system still worked, still worked. None of those houses flooded. They just tore them down. They were still functional homes in terms of, of that. And of course, the showers weren't running, and the bathtubs weren't going in there but they were still functional homes, the vast majority of them. So, I'm sorry? I, I, were they? Were, were they functional homes? Does anybody know that? Uh, through the, through the non through the, do we know that? Does anybody know that? Whether the homes they tore down were functional homes with some pumps working and the, because it doesn't do no good to say they're abandoned homes. Mr. Phillips, they, Mr. They, Phillips will answer that question. Thank you, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor. I spoke with Kathleen, the manager at the Essex uh, not for pro non profit uh, housing earlier today, and uh, there's 130. There were 130 homes that they have in their in their uh, their area. 120 are still standing. Ten were knocked down because they of, of issues. Uh, those all had operating sump pumps in that in them at that time. All of their properties today have operating sump pumps. They're all. From what she has told me, and again, I, I spoke to our engineering staff today, and until we could confirm, it's believed that all of those pumps are hooked into the storm sewer. I, I believe Mr. Mills can confirm that. But um, as 
as we know that they have knocked down 10. There's no further actions, uh, and I was trying to confirm that with her today. They are retaining 120. Currently, they have three vacant. Okay. So I just, I'm just, I'm just looking for opportunities in terms of of how all this rolls out in development and winter, and the time it will take us to get the the system updated. Councillor Vokes, who are you posing the question to? I'm sorry. Are you posing a question to somebody? Or? No, no. Okay. I was just. I, That's just Ben reflection. really answered it. Ben had pointed out how many homes were he would okay. be introducing into okay. the system. Thank you. I didn't hear anything from from anybody else. So. Okay. Councillor Snively. Uh, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor, to Stantec. Um We had other municipalities. I know we're not the only municipality had flooding problems. We're quite aware of that. Um, a report come out uh, on the other municipalities on the disconnect program, uh, water going into the storm drains. Uh, what was the result of, for example, I don't know if you dealt with Kingsville or Windsor, what was the result for, for the cost of in infrastructure after that? Uh, let's, let's put it this way. How much relief did they get from the disconnect program? That's my question. We do not have a quantitative answer, but the, the, in Windsor, since they've implemented the flooding, uh, severity has decreased quite a bit, and they are experiencing the same weather as we are here. Through you, Chair. Yeah. Um, so you really haven't got a, like a percentage of how much water would go into that system on one of these two to three inch rains? Uh, that information wouldn't be privy to us. Um, you'd have to ask the municipality uh, directly, and I don't think those type of numbers uh, would be made public unless uh, the request is made. But certainly, any dis disconnection of your, uh, down to your uh, rainwater leaders would lead to a positive uh, effect on your system. Um, less water in the system, the better. Um, even with adding homes or taking away homes, you have an aggregated system right now. And the more you add to it, the more aggravation you're going to cause. Uh, the more you can take away, of course, you're helping to resolve the problem. Um, that's all I can say at this time. Thank you. And just one further question, to Chris. Um, retention ponds, okay, um, we're looking at the gallows. Uh, development here and I'm well aware well none of us sitting here tonight want to stop really want to stop development but uh, what control would we have uh, Chris on the size of uh, retention ponds or how, how could we enforce that uh, through your worship that would have to come through in the development standards changes right so after discussing with uh, Stantec and getting recommendations on on how to move forward uh, with respect to um, improving or modifying the development standards, that's where your control is at. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Councillor Bondi? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think Mr. Nepsey might have just answered my question. So my, my thoughts are, if we don't put in an interim control bylaw, what mechanism does planning have right now to work with developers to hold them to different policies and procedures that are above what 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 we have right now and I see the engineer possibly shaking his head nothing nothing that's my worry I agree with Councillor Caxero over there I I don't want to our system is already overburdened like we've said it's already aggravated I don't want a developer coming and it's nothing against development but you know what um, I feel that Essex can lead the way in Essex County every municipality is going to put a halt at some point and review their policies and procedures. We might just be the first one to do it. And it, sometimes it sucks being the first, but I certainly don't want to be the last. I would rather do it now. I'd rather jump right in, say, you know what? We want what's best for everybody. Let's hold development until we figure out what that looks like. I, I don't want to add, if we're down 10 houses right now, let's stay down 10 houses right now until we can figure out what the new policy standards are. 
I don't want to put anything else on the camels. This could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, right? Five more houses, then it equals 10 more houses. And how do you just stop it? How do you control it? If we don't have anything in place in planning right now to control, to monitor, to set a new standard, then it's all just a handshake. And then we have developers and, and individuals, you know, doing the whole connecting their downspouts to the sewers again. And we're back where we started. We, I, I really do think we need to push the stop button, take a breath, uh, and I know we are heading into winter, I realize that, but still, sometimes things in municipalities take a little bit longer than we can all plan for. And uh, we could have uh, still a whole bunch of storms this fall, and we could start off with some early storms in, you know, March, some rainstorms. And I don't want this gallery flooded, again, with people, flooded. And, and I don't want the responsibility for approving five or even ten more houses to add to the problem right now, because uh, it just seems kind of hypocritical. And it kind of seems unfair. So I, I know it sucks, and I know it's not fun. And I, 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 I don't think it's sending a red flag saying we don't want your development. What I think it's doing is we're, do, we're being responsible in, in our governance. And sometimes being responsible in governance is a hard thing to do, and it's a hard pill to swallow. But I am very comfortable tonight passing an interim control bylaw until we get things sorted out. And uh, I, I trust you, and I'm glad you're here to work with us. We, and I want to set the bar high. I want to set the bar high for our residents. I want to set the bar high for our developers. And you know, one day LaSalle might have to do this, and Kingsville might have to do this, and Amherstburg might have to do this. And if we're the first to lead in the county, that's okay. I'm okay with that. And uh, you know, hopefully you developers can go to Harrow in the meantime and build some houses there. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Thank you, Councillor Bonney. Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I too. I, I see Ruth Ann here, I, I see Ben, and I see Remo. And I thought we, you know, some discussions might afford some opportunity. But when I see that gentleman at the end right there, who made it very clear to us that said it will labor the system, irrelevant to what you do, irrelevant to what that, I, I think, I hope you can appreciate us as council and you as developers. You know what's been going on. You know the pains we've had, the challenges. I look at Dave Cassidy up there. I was talking to Dave the other day. And from the first rain drop that hit the ground until the conclusion of the meeting and actually all that week, in between text messages, emails, and phone calls, I housed 127 of them. And I don't ever want to, I don't want my family to go through that again. And I certainly don't want to go through it again. And so with all that being said is I too will support an interim bylaw because I don't think there's no opportunities anywhere that will allow us to mix current build with current conditions. So it, if it means putting a motion forward, I'm willing to put that motion forward, uh, or if it just means, means the passing of the bylaw when the time is right. Thank you, Councillor Bose. Councillor Bjorkman. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, through Deputy Mayor to uh, Mr. Phillips, what was the... Uh, the study you said again we, we would have to do a study before we could pass an interim control bylaw and what could you just give uh, another recap on what exactly that study is through you you um, through the heat deputy mayor the intent is if under the planning act it's a planning act requirement that you must first adopt a study and that's why 7f is in front of you. Uh, we are recommending that uh, Stantec be, in, be further engaged. Uh, we would go through a single source. We would use uh, a Form 22, which allows us to go through the proposals and tenders without going to another firm. But because they are familiar with these with the situation, what we are suggesting is that we would further engage Stantec regarding the stormwater management and to determine suitability in light of the current predicted impacts, to look at climate change on the existing community, the sanitary and stormwater management facilities, and develop new or enhanced policies and standards for the new development to mitigate future negative impacts. That's what we're asking you to adopt first. Once that's adopted, you now have met the requirements of the Planning Act to say now you choose to, you would recommend imposing a interim control bylaw, and I can speak to you on that particular language on that I have for your we can put it up on the board and I have copies here available for you but you really have to 
adopt by resolution first the study. That's the Planning Act requirement. Councilor Bjorken. Thank you. So Follow just up. to follow to that, um, I'd also like to agree with what, what Sherry said. Uh, we've heard from different people that, you know, if we stop building here, we put out the, the interim control bylaw, we're telling people we're not open for business, we're not interested in being here. And I disagree with that exactly the same way. Um, it says that we want to protect our residents and we want to protect our future residents. And we have lots of people with their lives on hold because they can't do anything in their basements or in their houses or outside their houses. And if we all have to wait for a while till we get that figured out, then that would be the right thing to do. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion that we, uh, we adopt uh, this, taking the study uh, with Stantec. The recommendation? Yes. So at this point in time, would we like to talk about an interim control bylaw? I'll give the floor to um, Mr. Phillips to uh, introduce what we need to do here. Thank you. Through you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, just circulating now copies of uh, an interim control bylaw uh, I, w I do want to acknowledge the work of Jeff Watson on this particular file. Uh, he was proactive enough to recognize that this is probably the, the uh, appetite that Council would have, and uh, we've arrived at that moment. Just to give you a sense in terms of what it is that you would be enacting, is that all lands in the residential district under sections 14, 15, and 16 in the General Zoning Bylaw 1037 located in Ward 1 the boundaries of which are shown in Schedule A, the location map, and that's on the next page, if the clerk could show uh, page two of the particular report. So effectively, that is all of Essex Center. Uh, that's, that will form a part of this bylaw. They would be subject to interim control, which shall prohibit the development of these lands for any use, building, or structure, except for the following, and that would be any existing dwelling, a building addition or structure addition to an existing dwelling, an accessory building or other freestanding accessory structure to an existing dwelling, a new dwelling that replaces an existing dwelling for ha per in the case of a fire or in the case of one home being knocked down and another being in installed, so where one replaces another on the same lot, an existing dwelling for the purposes of this bylaw means a dwelling lawfully existing at the time of passing the bylaw. Effectively what it says is that if somebody wants to take out an application to put in an accessory building, they would go to our building department, they would be allowed to do that under the interim control bylaw. Someone coming to the town and wanting to put a new home on a lot that already exists, that's already designed and, and shown in a plan of subdivision and is ready to be uh, built upon, they cannot for the period of time that this interim control bylaw is in place. So you want to put in a pool, you want to put in an accessory building, you want to put an addition onto your home, that's fine but new homes would be restricted in Essex Centre for the period of whatever ch is chosen. Now this would, the bylaw is states that, I'm sorry, the, the, this bylaw as written would remain in force until September 1st, 2016, unless otherwise repealed by Council. So Council does have the authority to withdraw it if we were successful in getting a report back or, or changes in place such that we, we've appealed the or appeased the, the flooding situation, you could come back and repeal that at, at that point in time. So it imposes a freeze on the issuance of all building permits and, and we've had this discussion with the building department. I don't think there's any questions from, yeah, it does have. <laughs> Mr. Mills. Thank you. When council, if they pass the bylaw, I would like direction on the existing applications that I already have. Um, the one uh, application came in September 8th, actually before your last meeting. Um, that afternoon, I had an application for seven permits. I have 10 days to make a decision, and I've held off making a decision. Day 10 is tomorrow, so I have to have a decision to the builder by tomorrow. If you pass the bylaw, I can turn down those permits. So I would like direction 
what you want me to do with those permits. I have another application that came in September 14th. Application was not deemed to be complete until September the 18th. October 5th is day 10. So I'd like to have a direction on both those, please. Councillor Folks, is, is this in, uh, in regard to what he's saying? Because Councillor Kexero had his hand up first. Directly. Okay, very good. Ways. I'll let you go first then. Thank you. In, t in terms of that, I, 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 would, I would suggest to Council that whatever we can do legally, we do it. So if he has the legal opportunity to exercise what he needs to do, then we do it, without question. As long as we're within inside the legal perimeters of what we have the opportunity to exercise. If we're doing anything that is not within inside the perimeters of that, then we don't do it. It's very clear, and it's unquestionable, and Council should be supporting that. That's not, that shouldn't even be open for discussion. Thank you. Councillor Kexero. I'll move enactment of uh, bylaw number 1450. Do I have a supporter? Councillor Bjorkman. Further questions to the motion? Councillor Bondi. Thank you. I'm just, uh, I'm just curious what we're doing with the request from Mr. Mills. Where does it fall? Are we, uh, are we, this, I w personally, I would say no to the, at least to the latter application of September 14th, because that is after the council meeting where we had all of the residents come forward. The September 8th one that got in before our council meeting, that one's kind of iffy for me, but I think that that should be discussed before we vote on this bylaw. I support the motion, but I think that that should be discussed. So, uh, so Mr. Mills isn't caught in the crossfire. He knows exactly what to do and what we expect of him. Thank you. Sir Vokes. Yeah, I agree. Like we, we, it's obviously we're gonna we're gonna pass a motion. I don't know why we're what the, what the why we're expediting along so quick when we haven't even answered Wayne's question. And the truth is, is that again, we should be exercising our legal rights, not do anything outside the perimeters of that. And I'm hoping council supports that. As long as we follow that mandate, we got nothing to worry about. It's when we just we push a little bit or we we manipulate a little bit. I don't want to do that. Whatever his authority to do, his authority should be exercised as of right this minute. Councilor, Ke or I'm sorry, Mr. Phillips. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, question to you, Wayne, if I might. Uh, we have uh, determined legally what your authority is. I wanted that uh, stated, I guess, for, for the gallery and for council. You have clarified with a legal resource that a permit that is in place today is a permit. A permit that has not been issued is not a permit. Is that my understanding? Is that correct? That's correct. Um, my, I got independent legal advice on this issue, um, certainly because of the application that came in before the council meeting. The legal advice was we can deny the permits. The problem is we could also face legal action if we deny. That was, that was his statement. So we can, we can legally deny the permits. We have that right, all eight of them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Phillips. Councillor Kexero. I will support uh, also uh, denying all the permits. Uh, they are not approved as of yet, so they are not, there is not a permit issued. And uh, if the bylaw is passed, which I suspect it will be, that would mean that going forward from this point on, we're not going to be issuing permits. So uh, I think it's pretty clear cut. It's black and white. It's not gray. Is the seconder good with that? Thank you. Any further questions to the revised motion? None. I'll call the question. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Okay, so at this point in time, uh, we're back to the regular agenda. We're back to the front of the agenda. So that would be unfinished business. Yeah, I think that's where we got to. Six eight. Yep. And six eight. Yep. Okay. We're back to uh, unfinished business, which is number item number six.
on the schedule, on the agenda, and 6A, and I'm going to have uh, Councillor Kexero uh, make the first comment on this. I'd like to move to defer this to our, our next meeting. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Inspector Miller and uh, Mayor uh, McDermott are not here tonight, and um, I would like both of them present uh, for a presentation to Council. So uh, if I could defer this to our first October meeting, please. You need support? Okay, so we've got a, uh, Councillor Bondi supports that. And any questions to the motion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, item B, uh, unfinished business, uh, Essex Police Services Board meeting minutes. Need a mover and a supporter. Moved by Councillor Vokes, supported by Councillor Caxero. All in favor? That's carried. Uh, on to um, uh, simply to receive, yes, simply to receive. Yes, simply to receive. Uh, on to item number seven, reports from administration. Item A is building re department, report number 2015-08, the August 2015 building report. Moved by Councillor Vokes, supported by Councillor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? That's carried. Item B, community services report 2015-024. Moved by Councillor Vokes. Supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? Okay. Councillor Bondi. Through you, uh, Chair, to Mr. Sweet. Do we know, we don't know of any locations yet where they want to put these book sharing stations? Through your worship, yes. They've picked one at uh, Colchester Park near the playground equipment, one by the splash pad in Harrow, and the other one at the, uh, by the Harrow Parkette. Thanks. And Mr. Sweet, also, if you wouldn't mind, when they go to install these or have their grand opening of them. If you wouldn't mind letting council know, I think you probably would anyway, but just thought I'd let you know. We'd like to uh, know when. Thank you. Item C, Corporate Services Report 2015-14 in regard to contract for animal control services. Councillor Vokes, Councillor Caxero supports. Any questions, Councillor Bondi? Just, uh, if I may, with a comment, uh, since we have contracted uh, with Canine Service, uh, with Essex County Canine Services, I've heard a lot of positive feedback from uh, the community, and it's, um, we really used to have a dog catcher, and now we have an animal control officer who is proactive and engaging, and uh, he's just, uh, this service has gone above and beyond, and I'm, I'm quite happy to see that we'll be using them for another couple of years, and hopefully we'll be using them uh, indefinitely or until something else much better comes along but um, he's posting dogs that go to the pound on Facebook he's also doing a proactive watch in Colchester with our tethering bylaw he also works with dogs that come into the pound that have behavior issues to make them more adoptable so there's really a whole a whole list of services that he that he does in kind for us so it's uh, he's a this uh, company is an amazing, uh, amazing company to work with. So thank you, Council, for renewing the contract. Thank you. Any further comments? All in favor of the motion. That's carried. Item D, Corporate Services Report 2015-15, agreement with Windsor Essex County Humane Society for the intake of stray cats. Councillor Kexero, move the I'll recommendation. Move. Yes. Supported by Councillor Vokes, Councillor Bond. Oh, Councillor Bjorkman. I'm sorry. I, I just, I just heard a voice. It's, it came from that direction, and usually it's Councillor Vokes that says it. <laughs> sorry, Councillor Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is just part of uh, the package of services the Town of Essex offers our residents in terms of unwanted animals. So if you take a cat to the Humane Society, it's typically $30. The town is now covering $20, and we're continuing to cover that $20. But ideally, what we want to do is trap, neuter, release cats in our neighborhood rather than drop them off at the Humane Society. This is a humane method of disposal, but it is still a method of, of disposal. 
The goal is to reduce the unwanted numbers in the first place so we don't have this, so we no longer need this service. Many of the cats that are brought to the Humane Society are, are unfortunately put to sleep just because of the numbers and because if they are, if they are feral and, and like hiss and stuff, then, then they're not really adoptable. So it's great to see that residents are using it uh, when, when the situation arises, but at the end of the day, the best and the most humane method of dealing with unwanted cats is to trap, neuter, and release them. Thank you, Councillor Bonney. And I'll call the question with that. All in favour? That's carried. Uh, item E on the, on the uh, reports is Infrastructure and Development Report 2015-13. I think we've already done that one. And we've done F. We're down to G in the home stretch. Infrastructure and Development Report 2015-14-14. Results of request for tender winter control agreement for truck salter plow and wing rental. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? I have one question for Mr. Napsey. Uh, this particular truck, is it for a particular area or is it, uh, is this for private roads or? No, through your worship. Um, how it works, it starts off as a general route um, in the, uh, I guess, the northern portion of the municipality, but it's also there to uh, chase drifts and whatnot in the middle of the night to supplement our staff when we're catching up on working hours and, and whatnot, uh, depending on, on how severe the storm events are. So it's not um, destined to be in specific one spot, but for the most part, it does have a route. Thank you. One further question. Colchester North, or Ward 2, had contracted uh, services for winter control not uh, Town of Essex Public Works Department, correct? In the previous years? And are we continuing on with that? Through your, uh, your acting worship, yeah, this is similar to that. Uh, although with this RFP, we um, enhanced our wording as far as quality control and as far as um, um, trying to put this level of discipline, I guess, what, what we can, can and can't do if we're not happy with their service. But, so we've enhanced that. But. Terrific, thank you. Any further questions? All in favor of the motion? That's carried. Item H, corporate, sorry, Councillor Kexaro. Sorry? Oh, in advance. <laughs> corporate services, report number uh, clerk 2015 9, Fairview Avenue West bike path naming. Um, we've got Councillor Kexero wants to talk. I'd be willing to uh, to make a motion to receive this, um, but I think at this point uh, I'd be unwilling to to make uh, a decision on uh, what we name that bikeway if, we're, if we are going to name it. Um, I'm going to speak a little later uh, under new business with regards to uh, partnerships and sponsorships. And I believe our municipality is kind of missing the boat on that. Uh, I attended a, a small half-day seminar when we were up at AMO uh, in Niagara Falls. And it, it is a nice revenue stream for municipalities, uh, but a lot of municipalities don't have uh, a proper program in place. Uh, in talking with uh, Doug Sweet, um, I'm, I'm going to suggest he come back with a report to assess what we do if we do it well or if we do it poorly and what we don't do that we could do. Uh, and this, I think, is one of those things that we're not doing currently that we could do. So we could actually make some money from this uh, and having somebody uh, sponsor that. Uh, and uh, it's a revenue stream that we need. We, we need as many revenue streams as we can get in our municipality. This is one of them I don't think we uh, take advantage of. So I'll make a motion to, to receive uh, the report. Okay, motion moved by Councillor Xero and supported by Councillor Bondi. Uh, Councillor Volks, you got uh, a comment? Yeah, we got, uh, we, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we, as a result of the work and the input of somebody else, we're going to take their idea and apply another idea to it now in terms of revenue stream because we, there was a lady who sent a very cordial letter who had the utmost respect for 
who is our citizen of the year, who requested a simple sign, and so now we're not going to give it to anybody. We're going to partner with somebody else and let them take it? Is that what I'm hearing? Councilor Kixero. Through you, uh, Deputy Member Malash. It's not what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that uh, we put this on hold until we get a report back from Doug, uh, probably in, in the neighborhood of a couple months from now. And at that point, Council can make a decision. Uh, if they wish to entertain choosing one of the names that was put forward, great. If they wish to pursue uh, using this as a, as a, sponsor, a sponsorship uh, partnership, uh, uh, program, then, then we do that. But uh, at this point, I think we should hear uh, with regards to that and see what we'd like to do going forward, because this is going to set a standard. And if we do this once, and, and then we, we decide as a council that whatever Doug's, Doug brings forward is a good idea, now we've kind of set the table that we can't do this with trails. We cannot uh, enter into any type of a sponsorship with trails, because we're going to let somebody name them. So I believe it's important to hear information from Doug before we move forward on this. Councillor Folks? I'll, I'll end it at this. I, I, I will talk no further to it. But the bottom line is, is it was raised at a council meeting. And the direction from council was, well, we just can't name it Frank Maddy's way, even though that's as much, as much as I would like seeing that done. So council gave a direction, and all the council agreed, all the council agreed, gave a direction that says, Run an ad, we're defining our community who's interested. So we've done that now as a result of a direction to administration on a direction from council. And now we're going to go off on another route. I, I don't, I, obviously, I don't even know why we're going to wait and say we'll talk about it then. We should deal with it now. Because that was the original direction, was to simply gather the names and pick one. Okay, thank you, council folks. Councillor Bjorkman. Yeah, thank you. Um, I agree with uh, Councillor Volks on this. We, we did give direction. We asked people to supply names for a specific trail. And we have done this before. We have, whose, whose way is it going out to uh, outside well, of the Miller, arena? Miller Way. Actually. Miller uh, Way is there. Sure. So this is right here around the arena. Um, we did tell people we were going to name this. We asked them to give us suggestions, and I think we have to follow through with this one. I, I don't see where this will set a precedent that we can't do the rest in the future, but I do believe we need to follow through with what we uh, gave direction to already. Okay, we're starting to get to multiple uh, same speakers speaking multiple times. I'm going to go to Councillor Bondi, Councillor Kixero, and then if somebody wants to speak for the first time after that, uh, Councillor Snively has an opportunity. Councillor Bondi. Thank you. I, I tend to agree with Councillor Caxero. He's gone to a conference. He's got a new idea, and he's sharing that new idea. You know, we, we, I do want to look at possible new revenue streams. It's unfortunate that we still call the Twin Pad the Twin Pad Arena. Like, we haven't got any money for that, so we don't do a very good job. Just because we named roads Max Miller Way in the past doesn't mean that's how we should name roads going forward. I think it's a great idea, and, and the road is just completed, so I don't think that we're behind the eight ball in terms of naming the road. I think we do have a little bit of time to name the road. We have some great ideas from the community. At the end of the day, we may run with one of those ideas, but in the interim, perhaps we could get a sponsorship for that road, and I think it's a, I think it's a novel idea on how to look for, fu for funding when, you know, considering half the town is f flooding, you know, if we could get two or three or five grand, that's going to help with the subsidy program. Uh, so I support uh, the idea brought forward by Councillor Caxero that we have administration look at, look at a report, and hopefully we can get a name for the Twin Pad Arena out of it as well. Councillor Caxero. Through you, uh, Deputy Mayor Malosh, I also want to caution that administration at that point in time when we said we were going to asked to, uh, to have it advertised, they cautioned we did not have a policy and that we should have a policy. Uh, that, that, is, that is what I'm suggesting, that we look at this and potentially create a policy with regards to this and many other items within the municipality. So that's, that's my only uh, angle on this. 